I don't want some stressful nine to five that's gonna take me away from my writing. I do need a writer's PA. I'll take it. Finally got a job. And Hattie kind of being this one-to-one -one for mm -hmm. Lena. Yeah. Is there pressure then to, to do right by Lena, or how does that feel? Like? Um, I would say a little, mm -hmm. you know, a little pressure. But Lena definitely alleviated me of that uh, <laughs> pressure that I put on myself initially when we started the project. She was like, go out there, do you, make it your own. Um, uh, but of course, you know, stay true to the character and what we wrote on the script. <laughs> but do you, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, Lena gave me the autonomy to just make Hattie um, into who I wanted Hattie to be, kind of, um, and who I thought she represented. Um, and then, yes, mm -hmm. at the same time, concurrently, staying true to who Lena is and um, trying to uh, uh, put her personality into the character as well was essential. And then Christina and Gabrielle, I don't know how closely your characters maybe adhere to people in Lena's lives. Did mm -hmm. you hear about that at all? Are there people that she's, you know, she's looking to when she's writing these characters? Or? I think she's definitely influenced by mm -hmm. her friends, but I think that for both of our characters, there's sort of a mix of several people in her life, and then also it's a fictional show. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that that it is so important that we're doing this thing that is like her baby. Um, but I think what's so wonderful about Lena is that, like Jojo was saying, that she didn't, she wasn't like, it needs to be this way or the other. We mm -hmm. brought our own artistic license to it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I really love the the use of music in this series throughout. Yeah. And there's a lot of like very classic Hollywood score. I wondered if you could maybe speak to why, why that was decided upon why, why we went that way. Again, that's Lena, mm -hmm. because Lena's very 360. She grew up watching Betty Davis movies. She's a big Frank Sinatra fan. Mm -hmm. She's an old soul, mm -hmm. um, which is why I can relate to her, because I actually am old. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she very much wanted that sense of, that touch of old Hollywood mm -hmm. with the most contemporary sounds. Um, it's a reflection of her tastes. Um, and then kind of the DNA of the show. And, and they's, these young women are having a dialogue. These characters are mm -hmm. having a dialogue mm -hmm. with what came before, yeah. some of which was very exclusionary of them and mm -hmm. some of which uh, reflected who they were, so. You need to be the best writer's PA they've ever had. It's not a plantation. Yes, it is. Massa just happens to be a crazy black woman. Don't mess up the coffee orders. Only speak when spoken to. I'm so ready to go home. Excuse me, I say no. What we see on screen sometimes of LA, it's just we only see the Hollywood, the lot. And mm -hmm. we certainly have that on our show. Yeah. But then you go to these, these girls' houses and you are in their neighborhood and you see how eclectic and how different and diverse LA is. Mm -hmm. And to get to see that on screen is really fun. And to get to explore different parts of LA while we're shooting, that's also mm -hmm. been really fun. No. Yeah, I, I myself am a transplant to LA. I'm from the South, um, South in North Carolina. So when I moved here, I had so many people telling me like, oh, it's going to take you two years to get adjusted. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's your story. That ain't my story. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then LA was like, no, bitch, that's yours. That's you too, you too. <laughs> and um, just like Hattie, I, I had to rough it, you know, and um, still try to display a sense of confidence, mm -hmm. even though like, you know, I might have 27 cent in my bank account, you know, mm -hmm. and might not know where my next job or paycheck is going to come from, but it was a, a knowing. I think you have to come to LA with a knowing that whatever you came here to accomplish will happen. Otherwise, you not you're not going to make it. The cost of living is way too high, and it just <laughs> makes no sense to go through this struggle unless you have a particular reason as to why. Um, and so, yeah, I could definitely relate to Hattie in that regard because she was like, I'm broke, I'm on my friend's couch, but I know I want to be a writer. Mm -hmm. I'm from Toronto, mm -hmm. and so I, before I came here, I did have an idea of L.A. and Hollywood and mm -hmm. glamour, and um, definitely there's some of that, but there's also a lot of character mm -hmm. and a lot of things that I did not expect about L.A., um, but I think that's just... The world. Yeah. I first moved out here in 1986, mm -hmm. and it was a very different place. <laughs> Much less multicultural, mm -hmm. and it is so vibrant now and so full of teeming with exciting young people from all over who are bringing their whole selves to the party. Yeah. We need to support okay. black stuff. No, we should support good stuff that just happens to be black. In the first episode, you guys are having a conversation about just always supporting black art or supporting good art that happens to be mm -hmm. black, and I, I think that's like such a fascinating conversation. I wondered where, where you guys stand on that. Yeah. <laughs> we just said earlier, you all know, art is valid. All yeah. art is yeah. valid. Yes. I think, for me, I think mm -hmm. it's that thing of like, growing up black, I was always told, whatever happens in this house, keep in this house. Don't be out there telling all our business and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that thing of like, 
when black art is created, it's kind of like amongst ourselves we can talk about it. But in terms of anybody else knowing, we don't want to stop any other opportunities mm -hmm. for something to be created yeah. on down the line. And I think that, um, you know, I think that other creators of um, different ethnicities are giving leeway to make good and bad stuff that's not so criticize you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's that thing of also um making sure we don't criticize it too much because it's like oh we still want some stuff to get you know but also holding it accountable to like when you do get the opportunity to make art do it right you yeah. know do it well so they can also people everybody of any demographic or any um background can appreciate it and it can be universal rather than just specifically um that so i think that's what they were touching on was mm -hmm. like all right look you know we we get it we here for the team <laughs> but you know after a while we gonna hold everybody accountable and be like look y'all need to do um, and, and there isn't content. as much of an excuse before not to do it right because we have yes. more of an opportunity and we're very sensitive as a community because we are not that mm -hmm. often represented mm -hmm. so it's sort of when the one caboose leaves the station exactly please, <laughs> don't embarrass us <laughs> right <you know? laughs> right i'm sick of running errands all day so you a writer on the show nah i'm a writer's pa i took this job so i could learn how to be a writer what's your job description again to make your life easier you're not doing that right now <laughs>